everybody. Welcome to Flip It or Keep It. Uh, I'm supposed to check what video, what episode it is. I think it's 14. I didn't check. Um, I'm going to try to do these like twice a week. So, I went out Friday and I only got two things, but they're pretty interesting. Um, I got this Hess fire truck and two other, two other Hess towing trucks. This one's not working. We tried putting a um, C battery in it and it didn't work, but the C battery could be old, so we have to get some more. But the two tow truck ones, it was really weird. I was in I was in Sabres. I saw the trucks. They were um, on a shelf, not in the toy section. And I'm like, why are there trucks over here not in the toy section? But, hmm, my grandson would probably like those. And then I saw it said Hess on it. I said, oh, the collectibles. And then I noticed they were tow trucks. And I, oh my God, my son-in-law um, used to own his own towing company. He wants to do that again. And uh, uh, this is him all over. because He would be the age of when they were giving these out every Christmas. So we sent it to him as a surprise. And um, we sent them those two. I only fit two in the box anyway. And I told him I might be able to get this fixed, but he's not as interested in this. But so if I get this one fixed, maybe I can give it to my grandson. My grandson is his son, so um, he was actually playing with them today with it. So at least you know he'll take really good care of them, and it gives them father son time to play with them together. So it all worked out great. But he is so happy. He says I always wanted to buy those when I was growing up, and um, we used to go into the station. And I always wished I had one. <laughs> The problem with the two I got though is um, it's missing parts. One of them, one of them I believe is supposed to have a jet plane on it. Um, he said it was supposed to have a rescue truck with it. I thought one of them was supposed to have a rescue truck and one was supposed to have a jet plane. But it, it could be the year and it was different years. I don't actually remember any of these when I was growing up and I was a huge like matchbox type person and everything so I'm surprised I wasn't into these. So there's that, and the second thing I got that day was an oyster shell centerpiece. I just thought it was so pretty. Decided to grab it. I didn't really know what it was, but it's really, really pretty. So it says, you know, I don't. It's one of those things I don't mind being stuck with if you know if that's what happens. It's hard to really get you to see it because. It, um, I don't know, it just, the light just shines on it everywhere. <laughs> I had it appraised, and they said, let me put it back in the box. I've started shipping, not shipping, but getting everything ready to ship, minus the bubble wrap, so that it could weigh everything. And so that when a customer does decide they want to buy it, it's all set. You know, I, I can't tell you what I've gone through these surprise purchases like oh no <laughs> 20 minutes of five my husband's running to um to uh rockport to mail something you know and i gotta find the bubble wrap and, and the right box for it make sure it's wrapped securely it's not been easy <laughs> so um, i'm going back to all my items that i have upstairs and i'm packaging them but without the bubble wrap and you know i'm not closing the box because i want to you know re-examine each piece before I actually sell them. All right, so something I was gonna say about that. Okay, um, they said there's an iridescent glass with a foil type coating to the underside, made in Turkey. Oyster shell like dish, iridescent glass with a foil type coating to the underside, late 20th century. Um, why did I write it twice? whatever so that's nice is that so that was Friday and I went back in on Saturday by myself my husband um, um, needs the car at 2 o'clock on Saturdays so I, I let him like take a nap he drives um, all night um, not all night <laughs> he drives for like four or five hours <laughs> all right so anyway um, Saturday I went back in I got a lot of things for me for the, you know, for the family that I wouldn't bother reselling. 
like these candles, really pretty. Um, pumpkin, something or other, and caramel. I can't make out what it says on the on the jar. Mason or something, luminescence anyway. And this one was Smart Living New England Maple. Mm, we love maple here. Maple. Mm, maple. <laughs> Of maple syrup <laughs> and we got this candle which I was gonna put up I haven't had very much luck putting up candles everybody always does less you know it's just kind of a pain so I'm gonna keep it natural soy wax I've never tried one of these before that ought to be interesting and let's see I'm also gonna keep these cheese spreaders um, I was saying to Kev, I don't need cheese spreaders. I don't know what I'm going to do with these. And he suggested when I make my jams as Christmas presents to just give one of these um, with each jar. So I think I may do that. that. I bought this for myself. This is Tom Lynch's Watercolor Secrets. I like to paint. I'm kind of lazy about it, but I haven't taking them out. I did a wall mural in my um, in my uh, bedroom by Felix, you know, by, you know, YouTube, but I took his painting and made it to a big wall mural. I, I think it's really pretty. I like it. I was real, real happy with my son in it, but um, I never got back to finishing it. He wants me to put these long green blades of grass on there, and I don't really want to put those on there, and I'm kind of satisfied the way it is. I did a really nice wall mural in my bathroom. Just it's just um very cheery to go in there and see it. It's very pretty. And then um, I did a, my first. Well, I'm not gonna get all my pictures, but I started by um, painting on an eight by ten piece of paper, and I did a couple of um, ten minute ones. They came out really nice. <laughs> so then I went to a a bigger piece of paper and then my husband says um I go to the canvas he kept insisting I go to something you know bigger so when he wasn't home he was out delivering uh, food he delivers food back then he was delivering food for all the people in Gloucester um every time he'd leave I started painting him one of Felix's uh train ones that he had and I have to hide everything before he came back in and then on his birthday I gave it to him and it's his favorite picture I'll bring that up sometime and show you. Like here. I got this for my doggy while I was there. Can't forget about the family pet. <laughs> Bake a bone. I've never done this before. I've never baked my own bones for him. I think that he'll really enjoy it. There's a recipe book in there. It's supposed to come, I think, with these packages already pre-mixed and everything, but it didn't. So I'm gonna have to figure it out, I guess put in there. They have um, a ton. They have honey, cinnamon, parmesan herb, traditional, and banana biscotti. But in here is like about 50 recipes. So, peanut butter there. <laughs> he knows it says. <laughs> See that over here. Um, I totally forgot I had this. What I do is um, I take my tablecloth I throw it over here and leave, leave room so I can keep the tablecloth nice when I do my videos. I really forgot this was even here. But my problem is, what am I going to ship this in? I don't have the boxes to ship this or this, and I'll get to this in a minute, or the big Indian teddy bear that I want to ship, or even pictures. But I found a huge box today in my back room. I'm going to ship the Beatrice Potter authorized edition picture. A really, really nice frame. I have it all packaged up. That that was the exception to the rule. It's not watercolor, it's just a print. I just, um, I boxed it all up to make sure I could do it. So I still have to list it. And then at least I'm all set with that. Um, all right, so next, when I was in Savers, I went out to the car, I put everything in my trunk, I had to use the bathroom, so I went back in the savers. That's what I usually do. 
because you don't want to leave your card alone when, when you're there because people can take from your card. So it's always like, oh. I, I got outside, I came back in. When I came back in, I saw this. This was in the aisle that I always go to first and I always circle back and go to it again. And then before I leave, I go to it again. So it was not there. And I talked to the lady, she said, oh, I put that out this morning. I don't know what she means by put it out, but it was not on that top shelf. It comes with a stamp. And she says, I, I wasn't sure what it was. I didn't know what to do with it. And then I saw this stand. I said, it must go to that. And I said, oh, it definitely goes to it because I have another jasmine base one, the, uh, the two vessel one, but much smaller. This is 24, 25 inches. This is huge. It's beautiful. Um, I mean, I don't know who uses this kind of a thing. I don't even know what to charge. I know that it's it's going to be expensive, but not like really, really expensive. Just I, I just don't know what to, to uh, put it down as because Wayfair had this this picture. Theirs may have been smaller, but no, they said that it was the same size as this for 119 But then when I clicked on it, they weren't talking about this at all. They were talking about a huge glass table. So I don't like all right, why do they always do that? So disappointing. So I'm going to wait and see what other people listed it for. It's not on eBay. I can't find it anywhere. It's sold. Nothing. And it's so gorgeous. That would look nice like in an art studio. Really. Very pretty. I love it, but I don't need anything like this. No. I really don't. And I need, I can't list it until I can figure out how to pack it. Want it to break. So, so what I did is I decided to go back to USPS. You know, maybe I missed something on the boxes. But I love these boxes. This has made it so easy for me to ship things and see if I could get uh, picture frame ones or you know. So I ordered everything. You're not gonna believe this. I have 45 items right now that I'm totally babying and switching the prices and trying to come down all the time. Now and then going up on one that has zero views. If any of my items has even one view, I won't go up on it. But if it has zero views, then I take it and redo the whole thing. And take better pictures, um, put it in different category, better description, and, and then I'll go up bucks, depending on the item. All right, so, um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, so back to the boxes. I ended up buying, now remember, I only have 45 items for sale. <laughs> I ended up buying 395 boxes. Not buying, they're free. They're being shipped to me right now. The mailman's going to kill me. I know it. I don't even know where I'm going to put it. I mean, look at this already. I have a couple ready to go there. I got them stuffed under here. I have them leaning up against trays over there. What am I going to do with 395 boxes? What was I thinking? <laughs> and I don't think any of them is going to help me with um, packaging up pictures, which is what I really ultimately would like to get into, doing pictures, preferably without the glass, and doing oil pictures or something. But I need the frames. I mean, the uh, picture boxes. So we'll see about that. I got another one of. Keep looking at this. What's in here? Oh, I got another one of these. My husband loves these, and when he saw this one, he goes, "Get rid of the other one. I want this one." I said, "Well, the other one is more vintage. It says Springfield on it and everything else." So he goes, I like this one. So. I went to clean the other one that had sticky labels because Savers puts sticky labels on them. And I'm trying to get it off, it all smudged. The, the gooby gone didn't work. So I took some acetone and totally ruined the cover part, of, you know, the little plastic part. I think I can replace it. It's just when I when am I gonna do that? I went on Amazon, I can't find the right size. I, I don't know what to do. So we'll see, but these really good. And this one works very well. So I'll just pick up another one at some point and sell that one. So if, if, you know, if I like something, I'll keep it. And then when I find it again, I'll sell it then. That's that over here. 
trying to beat my husband before he comes home and we go up and watch our video. <laughs> and MASH. Oh, we're watching um, NASA, NASA um, Discovery. NASA Discovery, I think it is. It is so scary. I don't know if any of you are into that, but if you're not, go right to season six. Because to me, that, that's what I wanted to do because it's the newest information. Hey, Benji. The things that they are coming up with. You want to go up there? Go ahead. Go ahead. The things they are coming up with are really, really scary. Like, uh, I don't want to give it away, but, you know, it's not for the faint of heart. It got to the point where even my husband, who um, is always into astronomy, could sit there and talk for hours about everything to do with planets and everything. He's scared. <laughs> he doesn't even want to watch them anymore. The things that they're they're saying that might be out there. And then they really believe they're out there. So anyway, not for the faint of heart. But I love it. <laughs> I keep going back and watching them anyway. Hey, you know, the world's gonna end, it's gonna end. What can you do, right? Uh, at least like to know that it might happen. You know, <laughs> not that I'd like to know. <laughs> anyway, next. I gotta tell you, I'm gonna get a sip of water. Hang on. I don't usually talk about my running, but um, I'm training for the 25K. Now, I've run it before, back when I was about 50, I think. My son used to run it. And my husband, me, and my grandson used to go and cheer him on. My brother ran with him a couple of times. My brother, my brother was a very famous, not very famous, but he, he's going to be inducted in the Hall of Fame, though. Um, his whole track team from Beverly, Massachusetts, because of the COVID, it's been postponed a couple of times um, for, for uh, beating a record that nobody else could ever, could ever beat. So anyway, um, I can't wait to go to that thing. What? There's a really beautiful shirt I was selling on eBay that um, nobody bought, and that's what I'll be wearing. <laughs> $78, $78 shirt. Hey, I got something to wear. I'm happy. So anyway, um, yeah, so I was like, I want to do that someday. I want to do that. I've always had trouble with breathing and, and asthma and stuff like that. And uh, it's more like chronic bronchitis that I get. Anyway, um, one year I decided I'm, I'm just gonna do this. And it was September and I said, I'll wait till April. And I said, oh, yeah, I'll do it now. I'm glad I did because I bought myself up to doing five miles. The following year I got up to like 10 or 12 miles. And the following year I entered the um, 25K, uh, 20, 25K around the Cape, in you know, Boston, Massachusetts. And it's a really, really hard hill. A hill. It's a hard race. I may as well call it a hard hill because it's all hills. In fact, even uh, Bill Rogers ran it before and he had won the Boston Marathon. He said that this was the hardest course he had ever done. So it's very, very hard. Anyway, I did it. In my first year, I not only finished, I finished ahead of like 12 other people. You figure there, everyone there are runners and, and you know, they, they can do it, you know. So the second year I did it again, and um, this time I came ahead of like 20 people. And the third year, I almost didn't even enter it. I was having trouble with, I think it was my knee at the time, but I entered it and I did finish it, but I came in last. But there were only 100 people that registered that year. I don't know how many normally do, I don't remember from the two years prior, but I'm going to say like 500 at least anyway. So um, I heard they were boycotting it because the price had gone up or um, they had stopped giving extra, uh, uh, different category prizes, like, you know, for over 50 or over 60 or, you know, 30 to 40. I don't know. Or they were changing it. They weren't going to have it on Labor Day anymore. Switch it. Whatever the reasons, people were boycotting it. That's what I heard. So, to you know, come in 180th, 
um, any other day, when there's like 500 or 1,000 people, I would have been, oh, wow, I came in 180. But this particular time, I was the last place. But that being said, I have not even been able to do it since then. They changed the date of the race. Um, they didn't hold it one year, and then they didn't hold it again because of the COVID. There's always something. Or I just am not there. You know, I've made it to nine miles, or I've made it to 10 miles, or 11. And I'm not going to go out there and do that. So this year, I am running really, really slow. I'm tired of running fast, having you know, a problem my knee, um, getting blisters. Uh, I have to take two weeks off because of the blisters. So I've noticed that when I run slower, I don't get the blisters. So I'm like, I'm gonna aim for doing like a 15 minute mile. I think my best was 12.35, uh, you know, the whole 25K. So. If I came in last then, you know I'm going to be coming in last again. <laughs> if I can even do it. At this point, just to be able to do it, I'll, I'll be happy about that. But I went out today and I did 10. And what I'm doing is normally I would only increase one mile a week. I'm increasing it a mile and a half. And one advantage I had this year was at least one day in the winter months, I went out running. And when it was a really, really nice day. So when I was starting running again, I didn't have to uh, start all over from scratch. I got to do a quarter mile today. I'm only going to do a uh, half a mile today. I was able to jump right in and do two miles just to start. So that helped a lot. So I feel good about that. Um, I'll let you know. And I still haven't decided. When, like, when I'm out there, I get in my head. I'm like, oh, I'm not going to do this. Then when I get home, I'm like, oh, I did it. Maybe I can do it. It was hot out today. So anyway, all right, on to this. Um, this is, I got this Saturday. Very happy with this. When I saw, I saw it, I saw this sitting in the electronic department. And I says, hmm, that looks like a really interesting plot. So what I do is I pick up anything I, I like, anything I think might be of any value, whether it is or isn't and I fill my card up. And then I go park over to the side and I take out my um, Google lens and I look everything up and get an, I try to get an idea, is it good or not. And on Saturday, I was so proud of myself for all the things I put back that I just didn't need. So I started picking up things for myself I really don't need. If I can use it, that's different. Candles I can always use, you know, in the bathroom. <laughs> my husband and I love having them in the bathroom. And, um, Cheese spreaders, oh, I, I found a use for it. But like, it was this beautiful red cardinal porcelain plate. I don't need any more Christmas stuff. So I put that back and I had a hot plate with a palm tree on it, but it had a stamp on it. So I said, I'm gonna put that back. And I bought this penguin Christmas statue. My husband loves penguins. I'm like, he doesn't need that. We don't need that. So I put that back. I put quite a few things back, even a few more things. I had a um, vintage Coke sign. Um, that everybody and his brother was selling online. I feel a little bit of money for it, but not enough for me to deal with. I put that back. Um, so, you know, I, I, I'm glad I was putting things back. So I was looking at this and I'm like, it doesn't say what it is. And it, online it's showing like Howard Miller clock. And I'm like, oh, I wish it was a Howard Miller. I grabbed that. So I don't know if you've seen this or not. Over here is a grandfather clock. When I was looking up this one, this one's the low end line. Um, I noticed Howard Miller clocks were worth a lot of money. So, you know, they're top of the line. So, you know, I wish this was Howard Miller, but it doesn't say anything. Maybe I'll just put it back. And then I saw it. It's right there. Howard Miller. Yes. And this is in perfect condition. I took it apart in the story, just pull this out. It was working, it's still working. Oh God, it's five minutes of eight, I better keep going here. Right? <laughs> oh no, when did the, the dogs get fancy? All right, so that's gonna go up and it's numbered. And now I'm getting the right postage by doing this. If, if you're just starting out, trust me, do this so you can weigh it and you know I was so off. <laughs> All right, so. 
was something else. I showed you the um, the big base, right? Ah, I had something. This is a Tiffany lamp. Let me get another sip of water. Well, I don't know if it's Tiffany. Uh, this is the problem. That's where the problem lies. Everybody has one of these on eBay. And everybody calls it something different. And I don't want to call it something different. Right? That beautiful. We lit it. It actually, it, it works very, very nice. It's beautiful. What I love is this stand. Only one other person online had this stand. Angel blowing a trumpet. That's, that's wonderful. Um, so, I, I may have to ask him crazy what it is. One person says it's a Meta Lightning Tiffany Reproduction Collection Shade Lily Amber Green Pond Lily. Another person called it Light of Remembrance, Blue Votive Lamp, Soderbergh's Floral and Gift. Another one called it a tor Torchia. Um, uh, Another one called it, oh, it says, it recreates a famous design from the early 1900s. Shade is made of mouth blown of fine art glass. Lily shades, that's exactly what it said too. Shade is made of mouth blown of fine art glass. That makes sense, but whatever. That's what, that's what I wrote it down verbatim. Then another one said Wiseman 8 inch torch here lamp by Astoria Grand. Again, another Maida Tiffany. And someone else just called it Vintage Brass Tulip Lamp, Brass and Glass Blowing Trumpet Stamp. Which I guess I could do that too. <laughs> oh, a Tulip Lily Lamp Art Nouveau, style amber and green glass. It's just, what do I call it? So I may ask an appraiser that one. But this is worth some money. It's very pretty too. My husband's like, keep it, keep it. <laughs> wants to keep everything. All right, well, I'm going to go feed my dog. I think I covered everything. And I, I do want to mention one thing. If any of you have um, a parent or a relative who has dementia, I just found, like, my mother can't hold the phone anymore, and she can't verbalize anything back, you know, a word here and there. That's about it. I just found that um, if I stand in my kitchen and talk to her and videotape me talking to her like she's there and then when I go to visit her play it for her then I'm getting some reaction from her. Her foot's moving a lot. She like recognizes the sounds of my kitchen because she used to babysit here all the time and she could hear my bird in the background. I've had him 25 years. So um, I told my, my sister lives in Florida and I told her if she wants she can send me a video. Hi, Tweety. Tweety, Tweety, Tweety. <laughs> my sister watches all my uh, videos. In fact, one time um, she was in the middle of texting me and she says, oh, your video is on. I'll be right back. <laughs> she says they're very relaxing. Um, my sister has cancer and she has to have her ovaries removed. And when I first heard that, I was like, oh, that's terrible. But then we found out that it may have metathesize and she could be at stage four and not have much long to live. And the best case scenario would be that it didn't do that and then all she has to do is have her ovaries out. I'm like, wow, that's the best case scenario, which it ends up being. But she has a tumor that she's, um, that she has to um, have get shrunk. She's doing the chemo. She's being so good about it. I mean, seriously strong strong woman I, I, I love you Tweety and you're gonna do this and thank you for watching my videos I appreciate it but anyway I was saying telling my sister she could do this and send me the uh, the taped message and I could play it to my mother my mother would love that because her and my mother used to talk on the phone all the time too all right so anyway that's it and I will talk to you all later bye